when I was a teenager, I remember I wanted to have a, a goatee beard and I wanted to have this hat and like an earring and all this kind of stuff I was thinking about. And I was wondering like, why, why am I thinking that this should be how I look, right? And I remember it was based on one of the guys, I think it was one of the rappers or something when I was a teenager who I saw. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because I think we all have role models, whether we know them consciously or subconsciously. I think that our minds are programmed in patterns, right? So we have patterns in our mind that look, if I'm gonna look good, I should look like this. And if I'm gonna do something good, I should do it like this. And if I'm gonna get married, it should be like this. And if I have a husband, he should be like this. So if I have a wife, it should be... And I think, I think we have a lot of role models and a lot of patterns and a lot of things in our heads already. But the problem is that they're all subconscious. And I think it's very dangerous for us to have just subconscious ones because there might be things underneath there that you're not completely in line with. And so today, if you said to yeah. me, that rapper is my role model today, I'll be like, hell no, he's definitely not, right? But at that time, subconsciously he was. And so I think in the same way, I think it's really important to have conscious role models. Because like I said, I do believe that people have subconscious role models just because of the way we are as human beings that we map according to what we see and all these kind of things. So I would say, yes, you should definitely have role models. I think that the role model should be based on categories. For example, if I was going to do a role model on money, maybe I would choose one person. If I was going to do a role model on education, maybe I would choose someone else, right? So I think I would choose role models based on what it was I was trying to develop. And that's why I've got no issue with going towards non-Muslims and learning from them sometimes because of that. So I think it's really important that you do that. I don't think it's an issue if it's a male or a female, depending upon what area you're looking at. Overall, I would say, I think for a lot of years for me, my role model was Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimahullah. He's someone who's passed away, actually. He was the founder of Al-Maghrib Institute. And he's someone who I met when I was like really young. I was in my 20s, I think. And I was just changing at that time. I was transitioning to becoming more practicing, all this stuff. Uh, and I was around him and he's very inspirational for me. And I, I realized I modeled him in a lot of ways. And I tried to set up my life uh, in the way that he was doing it and all these kind of things. And it's very helpful to have role models because they help you to accelerate your route to success and learn things from their mistakes rather than your own and stuff. So I think that we're quite fortunate we have YouTube today. So you can have role models that you can spend a lot of time with. So for example, let's imagine you wanted Sheikh Mohammed al-Sharif as your role model. You could just go on YouTube, just watch his videos every single day and he would be there for you as like a role model on some level. So I think we're very fortunate in those kind of things. But then I would actually pick role models based on certain things. And that's why like when I'm even like in Ramadan, when I pick a certain theme, I will pick a certain sheikh to go with and listen to about that because I feel like that's his speciality and topic as well. But I think generally, definitely, I would recommend that you should have some role models and stuff. I think a lot of this is if you start to ask yourself, what's my blueprint for things? So a blueprint is basically just like a map or like instructions of how something should look. There's this whole thing about happiness is, Tony Robbins, he says happiness is when BP equals LC, meaning your blueprint for life equals your life conditions. So it's like you feel life should be like this and life is actually like that's like some form of happiness. Sometimes people actually get to their blueprint, but they're not happy. So what I would say if is you want to discover your role models in anything, you just need to see what your blueprint of it is. I saw something very interesting. Someone said one time, we did this activity. If you think about all the movies you've ever seen in your life, what is your favorite movie? Or what was your favorite movie? And I want everyone to just pick that in their mind. And I'm saying once you've got it in your mind, by the way, it's very interesting that a lot of that movie that you picked is actually a big representation about how you think about life. For example, let's say if my, if, my fav if my favorite movie was something completely different, would I think about things differently? Would I see life differently? Um, and this is why the past is such a big thing in terms of the way that it affects us. And this is why it's really important to be aware of that, right? For example, some yeah. someone's, someone's favorite movie might be something where they just struggle and struggle and things work out in their life later on at the end. And so you might find that whenever you do something, it's like that. You struggle, at the end it works out. You struggle, struggle, and the end it works out. And it's, why can't I have another movie where it just works out and there's no struggles? If you just ask yourself for your blueprint, you can start to see what are the models that are already there as to what I see is the perfect this or the perfect that. And then you need to question it. So when you come up with, okay, this is what I think life should be like, or my husband should be like, or this or that, then you need to question, is this correct? 
is this correct according to Islam, according to what I actually want now? Because one of the biggest issues with the whole childhood thing is that when you're a child, you don't really know much, right? And you don't have much experience. So if you make a decision and you have that decision and today, all these years later, 20 years later, you're still living a decision that you made as a child, that's a bit dumb. The reason why it's dumb is not because you made that decision in that moment. Like you were a child, you made the right decision, alhamdulillah, for that moment. But if 20 years later, you're still keeping to that decision when you made it and things have changed and you've changed and the world has changed and everything's changed and you're still going by, that could be very detrimental to you. So I think it's very important to question these things and to think about these things as well.